Hey there, I'm Linz and my pronouns are they, them, theirs, and I am the creator of Queer Kid Stuff. And this is my best friend, Teddy. We are so excited to be sharing more Queer Kid Stuff with you. Together, Teddy and I are taking a look back at some of our favorite Queer Kid Stuff episodes with this compilation video. If you want to check out more cool Queer Kid stuff like our new project, Dear Queer Kid, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and look at our website, QueerKidStuff.com, and support us on Patreon. If you love this video, don't forget to share it with a friend. Hey there, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Ted. Welcome, Welcome to, to Queer, Queer Kid, Kid stuff. stuff. Today we're talking about something called privilege. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough. Here at Queer Kid Stuff. All right, this is a complicated one, but I think we can handle it. Today we're talking about privilege. You ready, Teddy? Ready. Okay, so privilege has to do with your identity and equality. Oh, oh, I know about those things. Yeah, Teddy. We've talked a little bit about both identity and equality. Let's break it down. We talked about our identity and our gender when we talked about our pronouns. My pronouns are they. Awesome, Teddy. We also talked about being trans or cisgender when we talked about what trans means. That's another part of our identity. You're cisgender. Yep. We also talked about identity with your sexuality. I'm gay. And I'm asexual. These are all super important parts of your identity, but there are also other parts of it too. These are your race, your class, your ability status, your mental health, and your religion. That's so much stuff. Yeah, it is a lot of stuff. And we're going to talk about what all of that means over the next five episodes. We'll talk about what those different parts of a person's identity mean and what it has to do with privilege. But first, let's finish defining privilege. Are you keeping up, Teddy? I think so. Okay. This is a lot to learn about and it can be kind of complicated. If you get confused, you can always go back and rewatch our videos to understand it better. And you can always ask your grown up. Okay, got it. I'm ready. You can keep going, Lindsay. Okay, so that's the identity part of privilege. The other part is about equality. Having privilege is when a person has an advantage over another person because of how they identify. Oh, I remember. You talked about this when you taught me how to be a good ally. That's right, Teddy. Do you remember talking about what homophobia has to do with privilege? Oh, yeah. Is it that straight people have privilege and gay people don't? Yeah, and that has to do with homophobia because sometimes gay people aren't treated equally. I get it. I think. Okay, let's think about it a different way. You like playing on the monkey bars in the playground, right, Teddy? I love the monkey bars. Okay, well, the monkey bars are easier for some people to play on than others, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, I've got a fun new song that's going to help us out with this one. Sometimes when you're at the park playing, you'll find some of the totally get 
it now. I want to help you make a brand new jungle gym that everyone can have fun on right now. That's awesome, Teddy. It's going to take a lot of time and teamwork to get done, but I really think we can do it. What would you want to see in your brand new jungle gym? I don't know, but my friends might have some cool ideas. This is my playground for for um, people with different abilities. These are wheelchair attachment groups, and they click on to wheelchair wheels, and um, you push a button, and the wheelchair swings automatically. This is a swing with crutch holders. And then this is a slide big enough for a wheelchair to go down, so people don't have to get out of the wheelchair, slide down, and get in the wheelchair because that would take a long time. And the sensory garden has a little walk. And then there's a well and some flowers. And then there's some fishies and a bench. This, this is Mountain Top Park, a park that's meant for everyone and everyone can enjoy it. In the middle, there's a big yellow slide and it has a chair on the platform that lifts you up to the top and then you can ride down the slide and there's a soft landing at the bottom like an air mattress but a lot bouncier and there's also a seesaw and the seesaw can hold four people. You get strapped in and it does not bump the ground. And then there's a merry-go-round that can hold seven people. And you get, you get in and put your sweet belt on and then you spin around. Again, mountain top poke is made for everyone to enjoy. Jungle Gym sounds so cool. Thanks for the awesome ideas. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kids Stuff. We'll be looking at different parts of privilege over the next five episodes, and I'll be bringing in a few special guests to help us out. More friends. If you have any questions about privilege, you can always ask your grown up. A huge thank you to our supporters over at Patreon. They are awesome. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every other Wednesday for season two episodes. And that's it from me and Teddy. We'll see you next time at Queer Kid Stuff. Hey there, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome, Welcome to, to Queer, Kid, Queer Stuff. Kid Stuff. Today, we're talking about race. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Welcome to another episode in our series on privilege. Today, we're talking about something called race. You ready, Teddy? Ready, set, go! Oh, no, Teddy, not that kind of race. Huh? I'm going to explain everything, Teddy, but I'm going to need a little help on this one. Why? Well, to be completely honest with you, Teddy, I have a lot of privilege when it comes to race. Why? Because of my skin color, I'm white. Mm, I think you look more peach. <laughs> sure, Teddy, but most people call my skin color white. That doesn't make any sense. Well, not everything always makes perfect sense. I think it's time you met my friend Kira. She's going to help us figure all of this out about race. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Kira. Hi, Kira. Thanks for helping me out with this one, Kira. Oh, absolutely. Kira, Kira. What's up, Teddy? Can I ask you two really important questions? Sure, go ahead. Okay, what are your pronouns and how do you identify? I use she, her, and I identify as a queer woman. Awesome. So, Kira, today I wanted to talk about race with Teddy. Great. Well, let's get into it. It is a very important idea for you to understand, Teddy. I want to learn. Okay, well, first off, do you understand why Lindsay asked me to help her out with this conversation? Lindsay told me it's because she's white and has privilege. That's right. Lindsay and I are different races. 
Race has to do with a lot of different things, but one way you can sometimes tell what race someone is is by their skin color. My skin is darker than Lindsay's. That's what, part of what makes us different races. People who have my skin color are usually called white, like I said before. And people of my skin color are usually called black. Okay, so race is skin color and you're black or white. Well, that's not really the whole story. There's a lot more to it than just skin color, and there are a lot more races than black and white. Race has to do with so much more than just skin color. It has to do with where your family comes from. It's hard to say exactly where my family is from because a long time ago, black people were brought here to America without their consent. But I know they're from somewhere in Africa. What about your family, Lindsay? So my family is white and my great, 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 great grandparents all came from different parts of Europe to America. Race has to do with where your family is originally from in the world and the history that comes along with that. I wonder where I came from. That's a great thing to talk about with your grown-ups. You should talk to your grown-ups about where your family came from and listen to the stories they have to tell about your family history. It's important to understand your family history, the history of your race, and of other people's races. Because that's where privilege comes in. Because some races have been treated unfairly in the past and are still treated unfairly today. Kira, we've talked a lot about how to be a good ally. That's great! It's important to be a good ally to people of other races, especially if you're white like Lindsay. Yep. I try to be a good ally to people who are not white. People who are not white are usually called people of color. Kira, I want to be a good ally. What's something you want us all to know about being a good ally? Oh, there are so many things, but one way to be a good ally to people of other races is to respect them. That's one of the things you have to do to be a good ally. Absolutely. So here's just one example. Something that's disrespectful to me is when people touch my hair. It's something that happens to me a lot, and it happens to a lot of other people of color because our hair looks different from white people's. But it's disrespectful to touch my hair without my permission. Would you like it if somebody touched your fur without asking first, Teddy? No, I don't. They shouldn't touch my fur without my consent. Right, Lindsay? That's right, Teddy. It, it's really disrespectful and hurtful when people yeah, touch my hair. That doesn't sound like a very nice thing to do. It's not. So one way you can be a good ally to pe black people like me is to treat me with There are respect. so many ways to be a good ally to everyone. <laughs> you are so good at this, Teddy. I am so impressed. Thank you, Kira. I've been learning so much. And now you know just a little bit more. Thanks so much for helping us out with this one, Kira. Thank you. Uh, of course. You're very welcome. Bye. 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 I'm so glad I met Kira, Lindsay. Me too. I've learned so much from Kira. I'm really glad she could help us out with this one. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kids Stuff. We'll be looking at different parts of privilege over the next four episodes, and I'll be bringing in more special guests to help us out. Whoa. If you have any questions about privilege or race, you can always ask your grown-up. A huge thank you to our supporters over at Patreon. They're the best. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every other Wednesday for season two episodes. And that's it from me and Teddy. We'll see you next we'll see time you at next Queer Kids Stuff. At Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome, Welcome to Queer, Queer Kids Stuff. Stuff. Today, we're talking about privilege and class. Queer Kids Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kids Stuff. Welcome to the third episode in our five-part series on privilege. You ready, Teddy? Ready! Okay, help me remember everything we've talked about, Teddy. You mean ever? That's so many things! Oh no, Teddy. Just in our episodes on privilege. Oh, that makes more sense. Sure, Lindsay. Okay, first we learned all about what privilege is. When we sang that song about the playground. That's right. We learned about privilege when we sang about the monkey bars and how we can all help build a brand new jungle gym that's fair for everyone. I really want to play on that jungle gym. Then last episode, we met my friend Kira. And she told us about race. Yep. And today, I've got another friend for you to meet who's going to help us talk about something called class. Like school? That's a great guess, but it's not the kind of class that happens at school. Why don't we give my friend Gabby a call and she can tell us all about it. 
Ready? Okay, I'm ready. Hey, Lindsay. Thanks for having me on Queer Kid Stuff. And very nice to meet you, Teddy. It's really good to meet you too, Gabby. Um, Gabby? What's up, Teddy? What are your pronouns and how do you identify? Oh, I identify as cis female and my pronouns are she, her. Cool. Lindsay told me you're going to tell us about class and that it's not the kind of class that's at school. That's right, Teddy. The type of class we're talking about is social class. Uh... Gabby, why don't we back up and break it down a sure. little bit? Sure. Well, Teddy, this type of class has to do with money. When you have money, that means you can buy things. Like clothes and books and toys and food. And ice cream! Yeah, ice cream too. So class has to do with how much money you have. And how much stuff you're able to get with the money you have. Some people have more money than other people. We sometimes call these people rich or wealthy. And people with less money can't buy as much stuff. We sometimes call these people poor or less wealthy. So, some people can have more ice cream than other people because of how much money they have? And people who have different amounts of money are in different classes. But why? Everyone should be able to have ice cream if they want it. Exactly. So if we're going with the ice cream metaphor, some people can afford to get a waffle cone with a bunch of different toppings and two scoops. And some people can get a sugar cone with one scoop. And a lot of people can't afford to have any ice cream at all. That's where privilege comes in, Teddy. That's right. People with money have a huge advantage over people with less money. Can't the person with the big ice cream cone share their money so other people can get ice cream too? That's an excellent question, Teddy, but I'm sorry I don't have an answer for you. This is another thing about privilege that's really unfair, Teddy. Some people who have more money do share it with other people, but a lot don't. That's not very nice. You're definitely right about that, Teddy. Is there something I can do about it? Yes, sure. Everyone can make a difference, even if it feels small. It's all about kindness and generosity. Does that mean sharing? Yeah, Teddy. Here's an example from my own life, Teddy. When I was in elementary school, I changed from a school that didn't have school uniforms to a school that did have school uniforms, meaning that everyone was dressed the same every day and you couldn't tell what class people were. Well, then some of the rich kids started wearing expensive sneakers and fancy jewelry to school so that people could know that they were wealthier than the other kids and had more money. Well, that made the poor kids feel really bad and judged. So, then kids from both sides got together and decided that nobody should wear any markers of class like fancy jewelry or expensive sneakers to school. That way, each student could be judged on their merit, personality, and kindness, rather than how expensive their accessories were. Got it. Thanks for sharing that story, Gabby. You're very welcome, Teddy. Does class make a little more sense now, Teddy? Yeah, Lindsay. Thanks so much for explaining it to me, Gabby. It was really nice to meet you, Teddy. And thank you so much for having me, you guys. It was great to be here. Very glad you could make it, Gabby. Bye! Bye. Gabby is so cool. I know. Grown-ups, you can find Gabby on her YouTube comedy channel, Just Between Us, and on her financial podcast, Bad With Money. It's one of my all-time favorite podcasts, and you should definitely take a listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for watching Queer Kid Stuff. If you want to help support what Teddy and I are doing, bringing LGBTQ plus education to ages three plus, you can support us on our Patreon page, just like these awesome people. We could really use your support. That's it from me and Teddy. We'll see you next time on Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome, Welcome to, to Queer, Queer Kid, Kid Stuff. Stuff. We have two very special guests with us today to tell us about privilege and ability status. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Welcome to the fourth episode in our five-part series on privilege. You ready, Teddy? Ready. Now, we have two very special guests with us today to help us figure out what ability status is. You ready to meet them, Teddy? I'm so excited. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Teddy. Hey, hey Allie. Allie. Thanks so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Lindsay, I thought you said we have two guests. We do. Well, I don't see anyone else. Where are they? She's right here, Teddy. I'm sitting in her. Teddy, meet Twilight Flake. She's my trusty chair. Oh, I see. Hi, Twilight Flake. It's great to meet you. 
<laughs> cool. Ali, what are your pronouns and how do you identify? I use she, her, and I identify as bisexual. Great. Um, does Twilight Flake have pronouns? Twilight Flake likes she, her pronouns. Okay. Ali, Teddy and I have been talking a lot about privilege and why some people might have it and others don't. I love that. Privilege is really important to talk about. Definitely. So I think Teddy has a question for you. Go for it, Ted. Ali, can you tell us what abila, labila, labila. ability? Are you talking about ability, Teddy? Yeah, ability. There's a lot to talk about, Teddy. Okay, so you can obviously see that Lindsay doesn't use a chair to get around, and I do, right? Well, yeah. That's because I'm an able-bodied person. That's my ability status. Exactly. Because I use a chair to get around, I'm not able-bodied. That's sometimes called being differently abled or disabled. That's what we're talking about when we talk about ability status. Everyone has an ability status whether they identify as able-bodied, differently abled, or disabled. I usually prefer to say that I am disabled, but everyone identifies as different. We've met a lot of people who identify totally differently, right, Teddy? Yeah, everyone has their very own special identity. That's a great way to think about it, Teddy. You should also know that sometimes it's really easy to tell if someone is differently abled or disabled, but sometimes it isn't. You shouldn't assume that someone's ability status is based on how they look. Just like you shouldn't assume someone's gender. Or pronouns. The biggest thing you need to know about people like me who are differently abled or disabled is that our bodies work a little bit differently than able-bodied people like Lindsay. And that's where privilege comes in. I have a lot of privilege because I'm able-bodied. Getting around for me can be a little bit hard because not everything is made for people like me. So I have to get around a little bit differently than able-bodied people, like going up and down ramps instead of stairs. But just because I use a chair doesn't mean that I can't do a lot of cool things just like everyone else. Allie, I have another question for you but I don't know if I'm allowed to ask it. Well, you can ask me anything, Teddy. Okay, one sec. Oh. You know, Teddy, that's a good question and I get it all the time. Do you mind if I tell them what you asked me? Okay, Teddy asked me why I use a wheelchair. When I was two years old, I was in a car accident and injured my spinal cord. The spinal cord sends messages from your brain to other parts of your body. The messages that I send from my brain to my legs get stuck, which means I can't communicate with my legs. Teddy, I know that you felt uncomfortable asking me why I use a wheelchair, and next time you can ask me what's your story instead. That will make me feel and you feel really comfortable. Okay, then what's your story, Allie? I get to use my wheelchair to get around every day. It's pretty fun. And I love rolling down hills really, really fast. I have an idea. Why don't I show you how I do a couple of things? Okay, I'm gonna show you how I get into the car or into bed. It's called a transfer. First, I'm gonna put on my brakes so my wheelchair doesn't move. Then, I'm gonna use my upper body strength to lift my body from this chair to that chair. One, two, three. Ta-da! Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Allie, and for teaching us all about ability. You're so welcome, Lindsay. Thank you so much for watching, and to Allie and Twilight Flake for helping us out today. Now we'd love to hear your story. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for new videos every other Wednesday. You can check out our other episodes in our Privilege series in the links below. Next time, we're talking about mental health. Awesome. As always, thank you to our patrons for your incredible support, and we'll see you next time at Queer Kid Stuff. Bye! I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome, Welcome to, to Queer, Queer Kid, Kid Stuff. Stuff. Today we're talking about privilege and something called intersectionality. Whoa.
That's a big word, Lindsay. It's a big topic, too, but I think we're ready for it. We're kids stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Welcome to the final episode in our series on privilege. You ready, Teddy? Phew. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Okay. So today we're focusing on intersectionality. Can you say that with me slowly? Intersectionality. intersectionality. What does it mean, Lindsay? Intersectionality has to do with everything we've talked about with privilege. Do you remember everything we've learned? Oh, yeah. We learned about races and classes and uh, ability stuff and emotions and, and, and we met so many new friends. Teddy, I'm so proud of you. Why? Well, the stuff we're talking about can be really tough to understand, even for grown-ups. Really? Yeah. Some grown-ups just don't get it, but you totally do. Yeah, I do. You know, Teddy, you're pretty awesome. Thanks for being my friend. Lindsay, you're my best friend. I've learned so much. You really have. <laughs> and you know what? I've learned a bunch of new stuff, too. Yay, learning! Okay, so intersectionality. This is the big one. So we've talked about all these different parts of people's identities, right? Right. But there's something that's not quite right about that. Huh? Well, we learned about all these different parts of our identities separately, but everyone has all of these different parts of their identity all at once. You can't really look at them separately. Everyone has their very own gender, race, class, ability status, mental health, and other parts of their identity all at once. Whoa. Intersectionality is about looking at all of the different parts of your identity all at once, and looking at where you might or might not have privilege in all of those identities. You're totally right, Lindsay. Yeah. So you have to look at all of your identities and all of your privilege at once. Let's think about it this way. Your face is made up of a bunch of different parts, like your eyes, your nose, your cheeks, your mouth, your eyebrows, your ears. It would be weird if someone's face was just their eyes, right? Well, our faces are just like our identities. You have to look at them all at once for the whole thing to make sense. That totally makes sense. A just nose face would be so weird. Exactly. It's really important to remember that everyone has all these different parts of their identities at once because everyone experiences those identities differently. Okay, I think I'm getting it. So, let's take me, for example, and two parts of my identity, my race and my sexuality. I'm white and queer. I have an advantage because I'm white, but I have a disadvantage because I'm queer. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, do you remember my friend Kira? Kira, Kira, I love Kira. Kira's the best. Let's quickly look at the same two parts of her identity, her race and sexuality. She's queer and a person of color. That means she has two disadvantages and no advantages. Her experience of being a queer person is really different than my experience because of her race. I wish everyone all had advantages, Lindsay. Me too, Teddy. Well, that's the last thing we had to talk about this season, Teddy. Season two is over already? But, 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 I have so many questions still. We'll have plenty of time to answer them next season. Thanks so much for joining me and Teddy for season two of Queer Kid Stuff. Subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram so you know when season three is coming up. In the meantime, we'll be doing sing-along episodes, story times, and a lot of other fun stuff. If you want to help support our videos, you can donate to our Patreon page. You can even get your name in our videos, like these folks over here. And that's it for me and Teddy. We'll see you we'll next see you time. We'll see you next time at Queer, Queer Kids Kid Stuff. Kid hey there, friends. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome to Season 4 of Queer Kid Stuff. Season 4, Season 4, oh my goodness. Teddy, I can't believe we're already on Season 4. I can, I can. Are you ready to kick off our fourth season? Yes, yes, yes. What are we talking about today, Lindsay? Today we're talking about diversity. Queer Kid Stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. You ready, Teddy? Ready, Lindsay. Okay, today we're talking about something called diversity. Diversity. Diversity is an idea or a concept. Just like the word queer. That means you can't touch it. That's right. The word queer is also a concept. It's not a thing you can touch or smell, but when diversity is there, you can usually see it. Really? Yep. Diversity means that there are lots of different things. Huh? 
There are lots of different kinds of fruit, right, Teddy? Yeah. There are apples, and oranges, and bananas, and grapes. And pineapples. Yes, Teddy. That's diversity. It is? Yeah. The group of fruits we have is a diverse group of fruits. Oh, OK. And just like fruit is diverse, people are diverse, too. There are lots of different kinds of people. They are. They are. There are lots of people with different races, with different pronouns, abilities. With, with all different identities. Yes. There are lots of different people with different identities. That's diversity. People are diverse. Just like fruit. Exactly. Let's talk about how you can see diversity. Ooh, ooh, where, where? Well, let's take a look at our fruit. This group of fruit is diverse, right? Right, because there are different kinds. Exactly. Can you think of another group of fruit that isn't diverse? Um, what if, what if, what if it's just apples? You've got it, Teddy. That's exactly right. If our group of fruit was only apples, then it wouldn't be diverse because there aren't different kinds of fruit if there are only apples. That's how you can see diversity. Oh, I see. I see diversity. You can do this with people, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look at a group of people and tell if there's diversity. OK. In a diverse group of people, there are people of different races, big people and little people, young people and old people, girls and boys and trans and non-binary people. And people with different abilities. That's right, Teddy. Diversity with people is super important. Have you noticed that I try to be diverse on Queer Kid Stuff? How? When I bring in new friends to talk to us about new things. I try to bring in a bunch of diverse people to talk to us about different things. I try to talk to people who are different from me. Oh yeah, we talk to lots of different people. We do. And it's really easy to practice seeing diversity. Next time you're reading a picture book, take a look at the people and see if there is diversity or not. See if the pictures have lots of people who look the same, or if they all look different from each other. I can do that. Do you think you can understand diversity now, Teddy? I think so. Diversity is a complicated idea that takes some practice to see and understand, but you're doing a really good job, Teddy. Thanks, Lindsay. And we'll see we'll you next, see you next time, time on Queer, Queer Kid Stuff. Stuff.